Parents in this country are fed up and fired up. Some angry about what's being taught in schools, some about what's not being taught. Some parents feel like they have no say, while others feel like schools are catering to a small minority. And one of the biggest issues, gender, sexuality, and how education is addressing LGBTQ plus youth. Joining me now to discuss, Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, one of the country's biggest teachers unions, former Democratic Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney of New York. I want to thank you for being here because these are complicated issues that a lot of people don't want to speak about and speak about publicly. Randy, I want you to start by telling us what is it like for teachers right now? Because they are getting it from all sides, from parents, from politicians, from administrators, and from kids. What, what is it like? You know, the last three years have been the toughest years that teachers have gone through. And it's not as if there's ever an easy time. I mean, I remember in New York City during the fiscal crisis, even when I taught in New York City in the 90s, we scavenged for chalk. But now what it is is that the, it's the psyche. Teachers want to teach kids. They want to reach them. They understand how hard it is for kids right now. And what happens is that every obstacle then gets thrown at them. So they don't know which way to go. And that has made it really hard. It's actually less hard because of the aftermath of COVID and more hard because of the divisive outside politics and surround sound. Um, kids who are gay, teachers who are gay, people feel totally alone. So they just don't feel the support that they need to help kids at a moment when kids really need the connection with teachers. So that dissonance makes it really, really hard. Congressman, in theory, these issues are black and white, right? Everyone should have their human rights protected, especially children. But when you get down to it, it's not black and white. These things are complicated. How does one decide, where do parents get to have a voice in what happens in school? Right, well, you can't beat democracy and, and you can't beat common sense. And the best policy and the best politics are always rooted in basic fairness. And I think that if the LGBT um, movement has done one thing right on fights like hate crimes or service in the military or marriage or adoption, it's that we've enrolled people in the basic fairness of what changes we were trying to bring. And that is absolutely critical in the area of education and in the area of trans rights in particular, where, where instead of having a balanced, reasonable conversation around what's fair and what's not, and what is the right role for parents to play? For me, it would be the democratic one through electing people to the school board, letting them do their jobs, voting them out if you don't like them, um, and trusting teachers uh, to do their jobs. And taking a breath and being the adults, because there's enough children in our politics. Um, let's keep them in the classrooms in elementary school. But, but <laughs> can I just say something, Sean? Parents have to have a role in kids' education. And it doesn't just have to be electing school boards. And I think what happens is that if, if people knew more frequently what the processes were so that they could get engaged and there was a welcome environment, I think we'd see a lot less of the agita. The outside agita you'd still see. But in terms of our kids in schools, we have to find ways that parents feel really welcomed to say what they need to say. And, and but in order to do that, you have to have a basis of facts. How much is misinformation fueling things, right? The anecdotal thing, we're parents that we hear schools have litter boxes for kids or teachers are, are forcing lower school kids to choose pronouns. How much is that fueling the chaos when those things aren't even true? Well, Randy anticipated what I was going to say. And, <laughs> Sorry, and no, John. and as usual, no, said it better than I could. I mean, I'm a parent and I, I have three kids who went through the school system uh, here in New York. And I'll tell you what, yeah, look, you have to have some basic trust in the fact that what's going on makes sense for your kids. And of course you want to be heard. No one, no one should uh, for a minute suggest there's any better teacher uh, than a parent who cares about their kid. I, I believe that as a parent. But I also believe that you've got to have some trust in the process. You've got to allow qualified teachers and a school board that's been properly elected to make these decisions around curriculum, around content, um, and you'll have your voice heard in all the usual ways. And a good teacher wants to hear from parents. A good, a good school system wants to hear from parents. But my God, the, the, the anger and the, and, the, and the hatred being thrown at our educators um, 
I think has to be hurting the kids in terms of the quality of the education and just the example that's being set. But There's you're a, right. You're right about we tend to live in a factory environment. So the litter boxes and I mean, it was so absurd. You don't actually know when something is so absurd that you should what you should do about it. Like you're like, of course, that's ridiculous. But then when you answer it, you're engaging in that process. Do you know that 11 people in Florida are responsible for 60 percent of the book bans? 11 people. 11 so, loud people. 11 loud people. But they now have, because of what Ron DeSantis did, a vehicle by which to do this. So I think part of what we have to do is the trust that Sean just talked about. We have to be very focused on how we create that trust. Because even when people disagree, and they do, look, I was the first out, you know, labor leader. I was the first out education labor leader. And so you can imagine what that conversation was like sometimes in terms of how do you make sure, how do you assure, you know, parents of kids that an education leader is, is, is going to be, have their best interest in mind. Trust goes a long way and communication and transparency goes a long way. Can, can I just can say, I, I, th I think it's dangerous to try to set policy on the margins, right? I do think you have to start from the greatest common denominator. And I, I think where people like me and Randy start is that we've kind of got the scars to know what it's like to be hated for being different. And, right. and so there's a lot of people out there who are really vulnerable, and at, particularly at an age when you're vulnerable anyway. And so the first thing we ought to do is not hate on those kids, and we ought to not let politicians score a bunch of cheap points on them. And we ought to try to, every way possible, bring some facts back into the conversation. But, but, but we have to keep parents engaged, because if parents think there's a bunch of crazy politics going on or a bunch of woke stuff run amok, yeah, you're going to get these backlashes, and we're going to get some terrible outcomes. And that's all Ron DeSantis is playing for. He's playing to the cheap seats. But usually what happens is, on the fights we've had in the past, which are instructive, is that if you root your, your changes in basic fairness, then when the hate burns through, you get enough reasonable people to say, wait a minute, why can't we let people vote? Wait a minute, why can't we let people serve in the military? Wait a minute, why can't we let families who love each other be together and have legal recognition? Um, it's not like there wasn't hate in all of those cases, too. But I do think in this case, you've got you've to keep parents engaged and teachers, my goodness, right? right? Because they're often in the middle. I know these are hugely important issues, but I have to ask. Are they getting an outsized amount of attention when you think about other issues yes. that are massive in school, yes. like learning loss? Yes. I mean, frankly, I spend most of my time figuring out how to help kids read, distributing books, figuring out how to help teachers have professional development reading, doing, you and I have talked about this, doing career tech ed and experiential learning. Doing So why aren't we spending the time focused on mental health issues for kids and, and, and dealing with and addressing learning loss and joy in learning. Everything that Randy has just laid out is what every uh, lawmaker should care about. Giving kids good education so they can thrive as adults. That's what we should care about for, for crime. We should care about it for our economy. We should care about it for humanity. Why has this become such a huge political issue when we've got real issues in school to deal with? Because a hatred is powerful, and, and there's energy in it, and, and love and compassion sometimes, you know, take a while to take root. And, and, but I do believe when that hate burns out, we've seen this before, um, and, it, and it always does. If there's good people talking common sense, there's space for it. But people get hurt in the meantime, yeah. and, and, and kids get hurt, and that's the problem. But yeah. I do think that we're getting somewhere better. We've just got to stay together and have some common sense and not fall for the hatred and the, and the snake oil salesman. Sean, do you wish mm -hmm. you were gay? Do you wish that when you were a young boy in school, you would have been able to talk about it at a younger age? Like I'm wrestling with, is it better or worse for kids now, right? We're talking about it so much, so it feels like progress. But as we talk about it, a culture war has ensued. And now our young adults are in the middle of political wars. Right. Well. I think it's fair to say that in the way back times when I was in high school, it was it was terrifying, the idea that someone would call you gay. It was terrifying that you might be outed. And so it clearly, it, it clearly was so far on the other extreme. 
but but no one in the that I know in the LGBT equality movement is saying that you need to introduce these subjects before they're age appropriate for kids. And most of the people proposing the bans are doing it in the face of no proposal that, that exists to 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 have it happen. Very little data. They just are playing politics. And so the fact is is that we've come a long way, and that's good. And and the reason I start with basic fairness is because I do believe, as as Randy pointed out, that that in most of the movements that we recognize as progress today. There was a time when there was just so much hang anger and hatred uh, that people were getting hurt, that people were being fired for being HIV positive, that people were being beat up for holding hands, that, 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 that we, we cannot allow people to suggest that we've lost all common sense and that we're going to run amok in trying to you know, turn every straight kid gay or turn every cisgender kid into a trans kid. That's nonsense. We are not anywhere near that point, um, and and yet, if we could just, if the good people out there could just calm down and speak some sense, I think, and show up at the meetings and and say what they know to be true, which is, look, let's create safe space for kids who are exploring who they are, um, and and not rush to judgment on a bunch of issues that they may not have thought through, and let's do it in an age-appropriate way, and let's let parents and teachers and school systems develop policies that have some common sense in them, right? And we'll have some best practices out there. We can get through this, but what we shouldn't be doing is trying to score cheap political points on it and hurting a bunch of vulnerable kids. And the one thing that's clear, teachers yeah. are not groomers. They're not pedophiles. They're not turning. I, I love that teacher from Florida who said, I'm too busy teaching math to turn somebody gay. <laughs> and the last thing I would say is, trans kids, they're going through something themselves. Mm -hmm. That's so hard. Let's have a little bit of compassion. Let's lead with compassion as opposed to hate or anger or misunderstanding. Thank you so, so much. Leading with compassion is exactly what we all need.